Class to Chapter 9, Rhythms Originating in the AV Junction. As you know, junctional rhythms arise from the AV junction, which is the tissue located between the right atrium and the ventricle, and it's surrounding the AV node. The impulse generates around the AV node and travels anterograde or forward toward the ventricle and retrograde or backward towards the atrium. The AV junctional area can be divided into different regions. You have high, mid, and low. Whichever of these regions in implements the impulse will determine the location of the P wave. <clears throat> if an impulse happens to originate in the high AV junction close to the atria, it will arrive at the atria first and write an inverted or upside down P wave. The P wave is inverted because the impulse is going in a backward direction to meet the atria. Then in the forward impulse reaches the ventricles and writes the QRS. If the impulse originates high in the AV node, AV junction, the resultant rhythm or beat will have an inverted P wave preceding the QRS and the PR interval should be less than 0 0.12 seconds. If the impulse originates midway in the AV junction, the impulses will reach the atria and the ventricles simultaneously, meaning at the same time, because both are the same distance from the AV junction. Therefore, the P wave will be swallowed up by the QRS, meaning you probably most likely won't see a P before your QRS will form. Mid-junctional impulses have no visible P waves. So what happens if the impulse comes from the lower atria? If impulses originate low in the AV junction, the impulses will reach the ventricles first, write in QRS, then reach the atria and write the P wave. The P wave will follow the QRS and because the impulses must travel backwards to reach the atria, the P wave will be inverted. Impulses originating from the from low in the AV junction have an inverted P wave following the QRS. Right. The word on junctional rhythms. Seen less than in sinus or atrial rhythms, heart rates vary from slow to fast. They're easy to identify due to the fact that the P wave is either there or the P wave is inverted, or you will have a P wave preceding a QRS. First rhythm we'll talk about as far as junctional rhythms are is the premature junctional complex or PJCs as it's called. The next rhythm we'll talk discuss in this chapter also is the junctional bradycardia along with junctional rhythms along with accelerated junctional rhythms and last is junctional tachycardia. Here are the criteria for a junctional rhythm, like a bang simple PJC, brady, junctional car, uh, bradycardia, junctional tachy, junctional rhythm. All junctional rhythms should have this following criteria. They will have a regular rhythm or a premature beat with a narrow QRS along with one of the following either an absent P wave 
or an inverted P wave following the QRS or an inverted P with a sharp PR interval preceding the QRS. It's important to note that the QRS and junctional rhythms can be positive, meaning upright, or negative, meaning downward, meaning your R is deflected to the bottom or your R wave is to the top. Depending on the lead the patient is being monitored in. So if it's lead two, then you know it'll probably most likely be upright. If it's lead three or lead one, it might be inverted the other way. All right, so the first rhythm we're going to talk about is the premature junctional complex or PJCs. Premature junctional complexes are premature beats that originate in the AV junction before the next sinus beat is due. This is caused by irritable tissues in the AV junction firing and absurding the sinus node for that beat. <clears throat> this is caused by irritable tissues in the AV junction firing and absurding the AV node for that beat. Characteristics of a premature junctional complex or PJC is its rate, it usually falls within normal range, which remember normal range is anywhere from 60 to 100 beats per minute. It all depends on the underlying rhythm because if it's an assertion, meaning it could have started out as some type of sinus rhythm and then all of a sudden the junction, the AV junctions took over and are asserted, pushed the SA node out the way or the sinus rhythm out the way and took over for that moment in time. So if it starts out as a sinus, a normal sinus rhythm, that is what is considered your underlying rhythm. P waves may occur before, during, or after the QRS. If visible, the P wave is inverted in leads two, three, and AVF, if those are the leads being monitored. Your PR interval, if a P occurs before the QRS, the PR interval will usually be 0.12 seconds or less. If there is no P that pre occurs before the QRS, there is no PR interval. So there's it's in A. And QRS duration should be less than or equal to 0.12 seconds unless abnormally conducted for some river reason. Some of the causes of a PJC are the frequent cause. The frequent causes are such as heart disease, hypokalemia, which is low blood potassium level, and hypoxia. Other causes include medication, low blood magnesium levels, stimulants such as caffeine, stress, or anxiety. All these factors can cause the ventricles to become irritable and fire the beat early. Um, adverse effects, there are usually none, and treatment, you treat the cause. So say if they have low blood magnesium, well, the doctor will prescribe magnesium pills for them to take to take out the, P, to help correct the PJCs. Same thing if they have hypokalemia, they'll prescribe potassium pills to help induce the potassium. Um, same thing with stimulants. They'll make the patient stop drinking coffee, try to learn how to do stress relievers and everything else to kind of, so it's treat the cause of what's causing the PJCs. All right, let's take a look at this PJC, our premature junctional complex. As you can see from R to R, which your R's in this case are inverted or facing downward, we have 19 little blocks from R to R, except right where the premature beat happens, which is here. As you can see, just before PJC comes into play, you see an inverted P wave. So everywhere there's a junctional, a premature junctional complex. And your underlying rhythm would be a sinus, let's see if you take 1500 
divide that by our first interval, which is 19. <coughs> So 1,500 divided into 19 gives us 78 beats per minute. So we would say our underlining rhythm is a NSR, our normal sinus rhythm, with PJCs. And that's exactly how we would put it as our interpretation. So we'll put normal sinus rhythm with PJCs. So the next rhythm we're going to talk about is junctional bradycardia. Junctional bradycardia is a junctional rhythm with a heart rate slower than usual. A higher pacemaker has failed, which the higher pacemaker is the SA node, and the AV junction has escaped to save the patient's life. So this is when your SA node stops firing and the AV node or AV junction takes over for the person in order to maintain and to survive. P waves are absent in a junctional bradycardia or at least not visible due to the slow rate. There is some seismic tremors, artifacts causing the baseline to look a little jittery, but like I said, the, probably the seismic tremors are caused by your higher pacemaker going out and your AV junction and trying to take over to save that person's life. So that makes it this. Your rate for a junctional bradycardia is anything less than 40 beats per minute. Your regularity is still regular. Your P waves are either hidden or inverted if there are any. So if you do have a P and it precedes your QRS, then your PR interval should be less than 0.12 seconds. If you have one, a P that is, and your QRS is less than or equal to 0.12 seconds. Some of the causes of a junctional bradycardia are due to vagal stimulation hypoxia, ischemia of the sinus node, or heart disease. Some adverse effects that can be caused by a junctional bradycardia is you can have a decreased cardiac output. Remember, decreased cardiac output, output means that that last kick that your atrium delivers to deposit the last drop of blood into the ventricles, it doesn't happen as powerful as it should be, so you have a decreased cardiac output. Treatment for a junctional bradycardia goes as far as being prescribed atropine. Uh, you might have to put in a pacemaker or might have to have an oxygen. A whole bradycardia induced medication. Uh, you might consider epinephrine or dopamine infusion to increase the heart rate, which means you'll get an a, an infusion, you'll have a pump inserted to where if your heart does go into a junctional bradycardia, you get a quick infusion of epinephrine or dopamine. These are the last the rhythms we'll be covering today. So let's take a look at junctional bradycardia, what it looks like. And this is an example of it. As you can see, it is very slow. And if you can look just here, you can see it tried to make a PQRS, but it didn't quite go through. So, and then right here, you see some tremor effects. But this in particular example doesn't have any P waves at all. So therefore you wouldn't solve a PR interval. This concludes the lecture for today. If you have any questions, give me a text or leave me a message and I'll be glad to go over this with you again. Until next time, I'll talk to you later. Bye.